have a look at this image behind us. Uh, it has gone viral of a couple in St Louis mm. holding guns as Black Lives Matter protesters walk past their house. That's Patricia and Mark McCloskey. They say they support the Black Lives Matter movement, but they held the guns because they felt threatened by a mob approaching their house. A now, mob is their words, not yes, ours, actually. Yes, that was a peaceful protest uh, that was heading towards the mayor, the mayor's house, which is just down the road from uh, their house and happened to be going past at this moment. So protesters at the scene have dismissed the McCloskey's recollection of the event, saying that their account does not reflect what happened. And uh, Mr McCloskey joins us live from his home in St Louis, Missouri this morning with his lawyer, Albert Watkins, uh, who say that the couple, in fact, are long-time civil rights advocates. Good morning to both of you. Um, how, morning, do you how do you... Um, claim that you are Black Lives Matter supporters with the images we've just seen of you pointing guns at Black Lives Matter protesters? Well, first of all, your, your basic premise is, is incorrect. You cannot get to the mayor's house from in front of my house. Secondly, my house is enclosed in a private neighborhood. You cannot enter my neighborhood unless you're a resident there. It's all private property. They broke down the gate. They rushed towards my house. This was not a peaceful protest. The moment they broke down the gate and trespassed into the neighborhood, the, the pretense of civility, of peace, was broken. OK, that, that, you suggesting that the gate was broken down has been refuted by the Reverend Darrell Gray and a number of other protesters who said the gates were open. They didn't break down the gates. They just happened uh, yeah. to be open. So they walked on onto the estate. Yeah. So, so needless to say, what, what were you and your wife feeling at the time, because by the look of your property, and it looks like uh, substantial property, I'd imagine you have quite significant security uh, anyway over there. Why did you feel compelled to come out with such aggressive looking weapons? Why not just take your phones out and film the protesters or stay inside with the doors locked? Well, first of all, I'm not going to let you get away with the gate wasn't broken. You've seen the photographs, uh, the gate was definitely broken. Secondly, in the city of St. Louis, um, I don't know what it's like in, in London, but in the city of St. Louis, on June the 2nd, the city was set on fire. I watched while a convenience store, live on television, from the first time the glass was broken, through the complete looting of the shop, to the setting of the fire, to the engulfing of that building in flame. 20 minutes on live TV, 40 minutes on live TV, nobody showed up, nobody came. That same night, a uh, retired St. Louis police captain David Doran, who was working secondary employment, was murdered outside a pawn shop and not very far from my house. These events, which are labeled as peaceful protests, turned very violent, very unpredictably, and very fast. And what happened in my neighborhood was when this gate was broken down, and it was broken because you cannot deny the pictures, you can, you can quote people that say that it wasn't, but it was, and I've lived there but for 32 years. We don't know when that years. photograph was taken, do we? We certainly I, can't I do because, verify I do when because, that photograph was I taken. Do because, I do because I took the picture. I took the picture immediately after the event was over. Those pictures that are posted of the gate broken in half... So why is it that there's a, freelance, there's a freelance photojournalist called Daniel Schuler who was there to cover this as a journalist? Uh, and he says that... Um, he turned around to take some pictures of the people coming through the gate. Uh, he doesn't mention whether it was broken down or not. Um, he says, then he turned back around, and by then, he, meaning you, had this long gun in his hand. The woman came out with a pistol and started pointing it with a finger on, finger on the trigger. People were just kind of yelling at the couple. It was angry, sort of, people asking, why do you have a gun? It's a peaceful protest. And he says he really doesn't remember anyone yelling obscenities or anything at you guys until you had a gun. It was that's, you that the, were, the, were the aggressors and not the protesters, according to this journalist. Well, no, actually, you, you have to look at the facts. You have trespassers, people who have violated the law, who have gone into private property. They had to force the gate open. The gate is a locked gate. It's a wrought iron gate. It's a gate that's been bolted to a rock wall for over 100 years. Once they entered that private property, they were on the property of... Mr. McCloskey, whether it was the road, whether it was the sidewalk, or whether it was the lawn. And in Missouri, we are rugged individualists. We are from the heartland of America. You mess with a man's castle. You compromise the integrity and safety 
of his castle, his wife, his children, his property, and you are lawfully entitled to hold the weapon of your choice, flourish it, discharge it, and kill to protect your land, woman, children, and your property. Uh, Mr. McCluskey, That's how close were law. you to ex exercising that very brutal right that has just been outlined by your solicitor there? How close well, were you to pulling the trigger? Fortunately for, for circumstances, when I brought out the rifle, the advance towards me stopped. The advance did not stop towards my wife. I, stood, I stayed up on the porch, and you have to appreciate this gate that was broken open is maybe 70 feet from where we were having dinner on the porch. By the time I had a rifle in my hands, the crowd had advanced to maybe within 30 or 40 feet of me. There were hundreds of them. They were screaming. They were shouting. Spittle was flying from their mouths. It was a huge and, and, and dangerous looking crowd. I all of a sudden see my wife, who I thought was behind me on the porch, out in the front yard with a pistol and now in the proximity of a crowd which is surrounding her. I don't have a clean, for lack of a better term, line of fire if I have to protect her, so I come out in the front yard. From then on, people are shouting, death threats, burn my house down, pointing to the different windows in my house saying, that's where my bedroom's gonna be after we kill you, that's where I'm, my bathroom's gonna be, that's where my dining room is gonna be. Um, they even threaten my dog, okay? One guy took out two loaded pistol magazines out of, he's wearing body armor, out of the pockets in his body armor, shows me that they're loaded, clicks them together, and says, you're next, okay? I don't care what anybody, you were not there. No, the, we the weren't, no, we weren't. You've... you're absolutely right, we weren't there, uh, but we, should, we, we need to put the other side, which is all the people at the protest said it was a peaceful protest, as far as they're aware, People didn't have weapons. Now, looking at the pictures... You, you talked to, you talk to all the people... Ma, the no, what's more important, we have a police report, and the police report prepared by the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department completely corroborates and is consistent with the story, the version, the truth of the events that occurred. Mr. And McCluskey, can we ask... Do, I mean, looking at the pictures, they are extraordinary pictures to watch uh, you and your wife... Uh, as Rambi was saying, it's such an aggressive stance, but clearly you are scared. There is fear between the two of you. I can't imagine why you would have stepped out unless you had been scared. Do you regret it? Do you regret your actions now? Because obviously this has become a huge story. Uh, and the two I, I, of you I, who you maintain support Black Lives Matter and you are lawyers yourselves and you've represented people of colour in various cases across your careers, do you regret your actions? I do not regret my actions. I, I, I felt that if we did not take the action that we did, that the, the house would have been stormed, that we would have been killed, the house would have been burned. I'm still scared by it. And this is, it has, you got to take into context what this alleged protest was allegedly about, and that was to ask the mayor to resign for publicly uh, exposing the addresses of people that opposed her policy or were in favor of, quote, defunding the police, whatever that means. So what did these protesters, if that's what you want to call them, do? They have now disclosed my private information to the entire world. I get hundreds of death threats, hundreds of But do of you hate think that would emails. have happened, Mr. McCloskey, had you not come out onto the porch with a semi-automatic rifle and your wife not brandished a pistol at them? But would anybody well, have it might, noticed? It, 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 might have, it might have been all out in his obituary. That's what I was going to say. Instead of sitting here talking on British television, we'd be going to my wake today. Look, we're not dealing with we're not dealing with crackheads. We're dealing with two professionals, a husband and wife, both attorneys, decades of practice. These are people who bought in to the city of St. Louis at a time when white flight had given rise to the decimation of entire neighborhoods. Nobody was moving there. My clients didn't get in there to buy and sell. They bought, they spent millions of dollars to fix up a beautiful home, and they raised their family there for 32 years, painstaking restoring the, the detail of a, of a palazzo built for the World's Fair in 1904. So, Albert this... Watkins, can I just ask you then um, why it is that you, on uh, talking about your own career, um, you seem very proud of the fact, and this is a quote, uh, of successfully defending a white elementary school principal accused of sexual misconduct involving 10 African-American third-grade students. 
Yes. Why did you include race in that boast about a particular it was, case? It was very important. St. Louis has always been an extraordinarily segregated city. It's something we all must fight. All of us, all of us, especially old melanin deficient human beings like myself, have to listen to the impressive and noble message of Black Lives Matter. But that particular case was stunning because of the scope and breadth of the misconduct of the administration of a public school district, the largest one in the state of Missouri, that gave rise to heinous offenses being charged against an innocent man. After his complete acquittal, one thing that we had to deal with and address is the reality that we have this funny little rule that you're presumed innocent until proven guilty. A man is decimated, decimated by virtue of retribution that arose out of the yeah. very, very segregation that now is so vitally important for all of us to and understand. I wonder, I wonder yeah. with that in mind, uh, Mr. McCloskey, how you feel about uh, the members of the Black Lives Matter movement. Do you have some sympathy because with them and their cause? Because it feels like looking at those pictures, the pictures of you and your wife, and you maintain that you support this movement, you could be the rallying cry for all those that don't, for all those that are absolutely opposed to it. Well, you know, once again, I've spent my career representing people that have had a hard time, people that don't have a voice. I represent people in civil rights cases against police excessive force. I represent a young black man right now who's sitting in prison uh, as a result of excessive police violence against him. Um, this, is, this is my life. Uh, there was no thought whatsoever in my head at the time that I grabbed my rifle what the race or nationality or religious background or anything of the people coming through that gate were. What I was facing was an angry group of people that were the best that I could tell about to kill me and burn my house. And there has been significant precedent for that in the city of St. Louis, sufficient that I, I thought what was coming through that gate was my death. And I took the appropriate action. It never occurred to me, it never occurred to me until within about five minutes after this whole event was over, that people would turn this into a race issue.